Hello, Granite School District. We're here at the Capitol and the legislative session just concluded and it was a very uh, active 45 days. And uh, Chief of Staff Ben Horsley, myself, Todd Haber, we engage in the legislative process because so much of what occurs here has a direct impact in our classrooms. And so as we've engaged with our legislators, we appreciate those uh, that have passed those bills that, that we've worked hard to get passed. There's some bills that we were able to amend to make more favorable to education. And then there's some bills that maybe we're, we're still not absolutely thrilled with. However, uh, we're grateful for our legislative partners that work with us uh, to improve the conditions, set the stage for our students and our employees to flourish. As the superintendent indicated, I'm here in front of the Public Education Appropriations Subcommittee Chairmanship's door. I'm here to talk about the budget first and foremost. We expect a 5% WPU increase, which sounds amazing. Normally in regular years where we don't see a lot of high inflation, 5% is gonna cover a lot of, of our increased costs. Generally anything below, above two to 3% works really well for us, but with these high inflationary years, the last few years, all of our costs, whether it's our home budget or our school budget have gone up. In addition to that, we're also seeing a couple of bills that are, have large price tags with not any funding attached, and that's gonna to have to come out of that WPO increase, which is gonna impact our budget. We're seeing an additional $100 million invested in school security. That is one-time money. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's a couple of other uh, large investments that we're very appreciative of, including education and preparation and collaboration time funding and excellence in education and leadership. There's a funding bill that could provide additional incentives for teachers to increase their pay. I'm standing here in front of the House chamber where a lot of uh, House bills obviously came to pass, education related. In total, Granite School District was tracking about 150 bills. So between the superintendent, Todd Haber and myself, uh, we were all over the place, including uh, help from our Board of Education to, to monitor and track and speak to and work to modify and enhance legislation. A couple of bills that we worked on that were uh, having a, gonna have a big impact on Granite School District and, and education in whole. HB 84 was a school safety amendment bill. Um, this is where that $100 million in, in uh, one-time funding for safety enhancements is coming from. After that, there's gonna be some ongoing costs associated with those, those changes that the districts are gonna be required to pick up. So that 5% WPU gets a little bit smaller when we take that into consideration long-term. That being said, uh, HB 84 does a, a couple of very good things to provide enhancements and some consistency in terms of our safety plans and the approach to school security. It funds some uh, additional supports at the regional level uh, to make sure that everything's being done uh, possible to ensure the safety of our staff and students at school. Uh, one additional piece of that is it does require armed security in every school while it's functioning during the school day. So that could be a regular school, uh, police officer, school resource officer, uh, a hired armed private security, or this new school guardian concept, uh, which is a volunteer or a school employee who works and functions as a school security officer within the school. So there's, a, again, some funding attached to that. I'd encourage you to go read the whole bill. It's about 89 pages um, and went through several uh, iterations uh, throughout the legislative session. In addition to that, there was a couple of other bills I'm just gonna highlight. There was one on teacher retention uh, that provides some additional funding. Um, HB 331 uh, requires toilet training as a condition for kindergarten enrollment. That's a good bill. We need some help with that. Uh, HB 29 was uh, a needed clarification in terms of how we review sensitive materials. So we're appreciative of some of the, uh, the collaboration on that bill. Um, and there was actually some amendments made to that bill at the very end of the session that were very helpful. So uh, that's gonna provide some needed clarification for us. HB 82 was uh, a bill that wrapped in all of the State Board of Education's legislative requests and include another component that does allow the legislature to reach out to our, our teachers directly via email a few times a year, up to three times. Um, HB 347 does require an LEA uh, and to provide an educational environment that's safe for all students and staff and has minimal disruptions. This was originally targeted towards special education students that might provide a disruption in the least restrictive environment, which is our traditional classroom spaces. However, a lot of the examples that were given during the legislative uh, committee process were um, examples of violent behavior that were occurring in the most restrictive environment. So, uh, the, the legislator uh, enhanced the bill. There is a delay on its implementation to allow USBE to come up with some rulemaking, and we're hopeful uh, that that will actually prove to be beneficial to us. HB 362 provides some juvenile needed clarification on juvenile justice reforms, which will help us to ensure 
that we're providing a safe environment for our students and for our staff by keeping students who are having difficulties out of the classroom and in alternative programs, but still providing them the needed supports and interventions. HB 415 is the school fees bill. You may have heard about this one. This is another one-time funding, very small amount uh, to help us carry over and implement the removal of school fees uh, long-term. This will not impact extracurricular fees, but regular curricular fees. You're gonna get some more information about that as we move into next school year. One last bill I wanna bring your attention to from the House side of things is HB 182, which is student survey amendments. Uh, this was really geared towards SHARP surveys, but now will impact any sort of non-academic uh, curriculum related survey. And so if you're uh, reaching out and asking your students questions, that requires explicit parental opt-in and not opt-out. And again, this was geared towards the SHARP survey, some of you may be familiar with, but does apply to any other sort of non-academic survey, and we'll be providing you some guidance on that. Now I'm here on the Senate side of things where uh, there's a handful of bills that are going to have a big impact on our classrooms. The first one I want to discuss is SB 173, which is Market Informed Compensation for Teachers. This creates an excellence in education and leadership program to provide salary bonuses to high performing teachers. What this is doing is collapsing a number of other incentives that were provided to other high mark, high need teaching areas um, and then works with local LEAs to design some of those um, programs and metrics to uh, provide salary incentives for teachers to go into those specific areas and if they do well uh, provide additional um, income. We saw a lot more finance bills on the Senate side that don't necessarily impact the classroom directly but they impact our funding sources. Uh, as you might be aware property tax revenue is the main uh, source of revenue that the school board locally has control over. Uh, we raised taxes last year to increase uh, our educator support pay um, and when we can't make things balanced, we have to look at potential tax increases uh, to ensure that we can uh, make our operations run. Um, so SB 268, SB 208, SB 86 all had impacts uh, potentially hindering the, the, the district's ability to control that revenue. And so those are some bills that we had some concerns with and, and worked on. To wrap up our little uh, legislative summary, I'm here in front of the Martha Hughes Cannon statue. It's one of my favorite places at the, the Capitol building. Um, you should come and learn a little bit more about the statue. We saw many of our students here this legislative session learning a little bit more about Martha and her history. This statue is going to head to Washington, D.C. in a little bit. Uh, but in conclusion, um, we tracked over 150 bills, about 63% of those bills ended up passing um, and a lot of impacts that are going to come as a result. So we have what's called a compliance committee that we organize at the district level, the superintendent, myself, our legal counsel, Doug Larson, uh, Todd Haber, and some other folks help us uh, track all the legislative pieces and then turn them into whether we need to uh, change a policy, uh, implement a, a memorandum, uh, provide any training or guidance, and unfortunately, in some instances, look at that WPU increase and figure out how we're gonna pay for it. And so we'll start that work in earnest. As you can imagine, the budget cycle's just right behind us. So Todd haber has been working hard to look at the figures that have been proposed and determine how we're gonna pay uh, for next year's uh, needed expenditure. So hopefully this information is helpful. We're gonna send you uh, a PowerPoint with another legislative wrap up that highlights a, a bunch of more bills if you have more interest on in that, as well as our full legislative tracker, which will take you to the legislative website to view those bills directly. Thanks so much and have a great day.